What's good, two people? This is Denny from TDB, bringing you guys in between in between episode number seven. Um, so I've been a huge fan of this, uh, this um, Red Pour cake. Uh, it's a two actually um, for a while. Probably had six of these at this point. This is my probably fourth one. I have another two. Um, as you can see. And um, this is the Shake One um, 2.0. This is from 2007, and I got this from United Sourcing. Um, and I wanted to open this up for you guys with my little handy tea pick. Somehow, first person, and then brew this up for you guys. Um, so we're gonna try to capture this first person. It's probably gonna fail miserably. Um, first thing I'm gonna do actually is a sip of water. Right, let's give this a shot. I have no idea how we're going to do this with, with one hand, basically, holding the camera. First thing we're going to do is open this up. Ah, it's on camera too, okay. This is good stuff. No, I don't want that to rip. Mmm. You can see the um, indentation lines from the, the actual paper. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There it is. Pretty cool. Okay. Ha! This is one handed, so the natural indication. Yep, yeah, it's doing is for this to move. Oh my god. In between the soda number fail over here. Alright, come on. I try not to get my hand all over the tea, but I go through this stuff so fast, it's all good. Ah, uh, okay. This is. <laughs> we're getting the camera back. Let's see if we can do it this way. Let's see if that's too close in. I don't know. Thank you guys for bearing with me here. Yeah. That beautiful pure cake. Chua coming wonderfully apart right there. So put this out now. And um, we've had this tea on the show already before, but I wanted to bring it on today just to drink it. Uh, it's one of my favorite teas to drink daily, and um, it's really fun to always do taste comparisons. So we'll see how it tastes today. Um, but it's, you can see from the tuo, it's really quite nice. Leaf side is kind of medium, um, ripe tends to get depending on the stock, medium to smaller. So I like to get kind of some big pieces like, eh, this is kind of a medium sized piece at this point. Um, let's see if we can get this close up, whoop, guitar. It doesn't look like we're getting too much close-ups here, but we'll take our Yixing clay teapot. Take this piece, and this piece, and this piece is nice and thick. And we'll just take... Okay, there you have it. A little messy, no big deal. I want to show that to you guys. 
so we got the tea tray. Let's grab the water. Oop, we are missing our aim today. And oh my goodness, we don't have our pouring cha wan, so we're just gonna have to do it this way. Um I just do this to really agitate the water throughout the leaves and get a lot of the rinse um, penetrating the actual depth of the pour itself. Um, and we'll get another rinse going on in here. And this eventually will get very hot. Um, oh my god. Okay. Uh, just really quickly, this is more of it that's just come out of the the Yixing. This is from, I want to say 2000. This is a, a ripe. This was a sample sent in to us from um, some, Taiwan, some Taiwanese Zulon tea. Not quite sure which one it was. And this was a Nepalese uh, white tea um, that we got. Okay. So let's put the camera. Boom. <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience with my craziness here. So we'll do a quick, quicker second rinse. And um, it's probably because it's in a tea pot, but the aroma is not crazy uh, strong on this right now. Let's give it a smell. It's still nice and solid in there. So. Uh, it's like oaky. Cherries, a little hint of vanilla. Almost like a very small <laughs> smell of a um, of like a hospital room. It's kind of like that, like a bleach detergenty kind of artificially clean sort of smell. Almost like uh, maybe like you would describe something tasting kind of chemically, like a cough syrup that kind of tasted chemically or medicine like that. Just a hint of uh, really ripe plums. Cool. Okay. Let's give this a shot. Ultra viscous, thick, very dark, right here, virtually impossible to see in there. Ouch, it's nice and hot. Whew. Um, but yeah, very. That's just still, that's kind of a chunk in there, it's getting nice and wet, um, but yeah, it's quite, quite dark, um, looks basically pitch black from in here, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever had currants before, but uh, there's a lot of currant fruit in the front of it. Um, kind of that like citrusy, herby, 
lemongrassy kind of um, three quarters of the way through. Really viscous, really full bodied. It's like uh, drinking um, a Pinot, very thick, um, uh, sugary um, red wine. Something that's very. leaves a kind of a, a thing on your teeth. Um, in, in not tanned at all, though. Yeah, like a little bit of sort of like this mint, um, spearmint, herb, herb, more herbal um, characters kind of at the end of it. Um, and, you know, it's got the cherries in there. It's got the, the vanilla more on the nose than on the flavor. Um, the currants, I think, are more coming through than the plums in terms of the, the taste. Um, and that kind of oaky body. Um, it makes it taste almost like the aged taste. But the actual aged taste, as I've described on the show a bunch of times, is kind of a strange blunted um, thing, literally. Sweet um, in kind of a molasses -y way. I think would be the best way to describe it. So like, <clears throat> it's not corn, it's not fruit, it's not um, uh, tart sweet. It's kind of like that uh, her herby, menthol-y, molasses-y kind of bark sweet. So I think molasses, definitely. All right, let's give this another shot. We're doing it uh, <laughs> mint tea style, pouring as high as we can, cooling the tea down, um, and also making a big old mess. Again, the liqueur is extremely dark, um, and it's very viscous, and you guys saw how much leaf I used. It wasn't a crazy amount of leaf, um, it just depends on the brewing parameters, and also I think getting the, the leaves a little wet. Um, to start and going a little bit of a longer first uh, rinse does help with that. All right, let's see how this goes. Cheers, guys. Mm. Much more pine. Um, much more of that kind of herb. Um, not herb, but uh, um, salty, minerally front. A little bit more sour. Um, again, I think that kind of the currants kind of play into that uh, well, but I'm not getting as much of the fruit, so it's more like, imagine that being fermented. Um, Definitely has that kind of minerally um, fresh shaved pencil graphite smell to it. Let's give it a smell. Oh man. This reminds me of like the Oregon coast um, kind of makes me think of like a salty beach that's kind of drizzling outside. Uh, but think think oak, think cherries in terms of the smell, a little bit of the kind of that mineraly something that I'm calling um, the Oregon coast. <laughs> Ugh. 
absolutely wonderful. I think part of the, the characteristics of this tea that make it a daily drinker for me are its body, its viscosity, its uh, balance. So those things make this tea uh, a, a startling and yet um, wonderful experience every time I drink it. It's it's such a much more of a of a viscous drink than a cup of water or um, most teas that you're going to have just because of because of the thickness of it. I love the flavor profile myself, so that's just a personal preference, but that kind of sweet molasses meets oaky cherry currants with sort of little hints of um, kind of salty, uh, earthy herbs. Really, really nice. Um, this tea is super affordable, you know, sourcing. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, In Between Set Number 7. If you did, give me comments. Um, I can't believe that the feedback has been good so far. So um, it's a pleasure for me to do this stuff. It's fun. Uh, I love just rambling and showing you guys some of the stuff I've been drinking. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up um, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, um, TDB and TDB.org. See you guys.